So in this last section, we're going to talk measures of variation. And now what we talk about is really the spread. So I want us to just kind of look at a small data set. I have three sections of the same class, and the numbers that you see there are quantitative data, and they are quiz scores out of 10. It's a 10-point quiz, and those are their points. If we observe closely, we would see that each of these sections have a mean of 5. And they have a median of 5. But then you're saying they all have the same average and they all have the same median, but their data sets look so different. And I would say, yeah. So just because data, just because you have the same mean and median, it doesn't mean your data is the same, right? Our data is different. So if the mean and median are the same, it's wise to maybe talk about the spread of the data. For example, let's take the mean of 5. Look at section A. If I asked you, what was, what is the distance from the mean, from the mean of the, with these scores? So if the mean is 5, and all these scores are 5, is there any distance between these scores and the mean of 5? You're like, no, they're all the same. Like, it's a mean of 5, and all the scores are 5. Right. So we would say something like, well, that means that these, well, I would say this first one, there is zero spread. Right? There's no difference between the mean and the values of the quizzes in section A. What about in section B? If I put 5 here, how far is 5 from 0 and how far is 5 from 10? Well, from 0 to 5 is 5 points and from 5 to 10 is also 5 points. So wouldn't you say here the spread is going to be 5? So there's a 5 point spread here from the mean. Okay. The last part in section C, if I put 5 here, here's 5, what's the distance from 5 to 4 and 5 to 6? So from 4 to 5 is 1 point, and from 5 to 6 is 1 point, and we can see that there's a 1 point spread here. And you're like, okay, what's your point? Ugh, right? Well, that you can have three totally different data sets have the identical mean and median for all of them, yet their spread can be different and exactly what it is. So this is what this section talks about. It talks about the variation from the mean, okay, from the middle. Okay, so these mean and medians can happen, but the spread is really the part that is the variation between the mean and what's happening with the data. We have three of these that talk about it. It's the range, the standard deviation, and the five number summary. So um, for the range, the range is quite simple. So that's just taking the largest value of your data set and subtracting the smallest, and it's that easy. So the range here will be equal to the largest value, which was 399. minus the smallest uh, cost of a jar, which is 329. And so that ended up being how many cents? 70 cents. So here's the range, numerical value. And then we could say that the price is a peanut butter range, 70 cents. something like that, or have a range of something like that. But really, it's just you're saying that the range of the data is 70 cents. OK, the second part is the standard deviation. The standard deviation is exactly what it is. It's exactly what we just did up here. It is called the average distance from the mean. 
the standard deviation is the average distance from the mean and that's really what it is so the standard deviation we have a nice little sigma symbol so this symbol here is actually called sigma in Greek and really what it is is a lowercase s in Greek we can do that or put SD for standard deviation. Um, it's however you want to use it. I like sigma because it's simple rather than write the entire phrase standard deviation. Okay, and essentially all it is, as it states here, is um, how it deviates from the mean, the average distance from the mean. So if it's distance, then it has to always be positive because the po distance is always positive. And if all the values are equal, there is no deviation from the mean. That's like section A, right? If the mean is are all the values in the data, then it, there's no spread. And um, it has the same units as the mean. And it can be highly influenced uh, by outliers like the mean. Right? And it is interpreted as the give or take. So we find the average, and we can say the average is blah, give or take the standard deviation. So that first, that one standard deviation is that give or take on each side. Like our sections up here, our give or take in this case was five, right? Five units this way. So the average is five points on the quiz, give or take some five points. So students either got zero to 10. Here, the average was, the average score on this quiz was five points, give or take one point, right? So the, the spread part, the average distance from the mean or the standard deviation is always that average distance from the, from the mean is a give or take. How do we calculate these? Well, we can calculate it by hand by following these steps, and then we can also use the calculator. So the calculator recommended that we can see right here also allows you to enter in a list of raw data and calculate um, the standard deviation and the mean and other stats. And also, um, it, you can also enter in a frequency table, which is really nice. So let's go ahead and try this. So essentially, you're just going to find the mean and then subtract the mean and the data values and then square them. And then you're going to add them up and then divide by n minus 1. And then take the square root. So it's just a step-by-step -step process. So let's just take the peanut butter jar prices. I like this example because it's five, only five pieces of data. And we already have the average. Um, and the range and all that stuff, right? And the median. So the uh, the mean we found to be, and you could go ahead and find it too by just adding them all up and dividing by five. The mean is um, 368. So if we put 368 here, Then we subtract each data value minus the mean. So we're going to take this minus this and put it here. This minus this, put it here. And don't worry if it's negative or positive or whatever. It doesn't really matter in the end because we're going to square it anyways next. So if I were to subtract those, I could go to my calculator and put 329 minus 368 and get negative. 39 cents and then hit 359 minus 368 and negative 0 0.09 and then 375 minus 368 and if you can do this in your head because you're really I know some of you by your forums that you guys are great at cash back, you know, counting cash and coins. So do it in your head if you can. If not, just use the calculator. And therefore, the last two is 0.11 and then 0.31. Okay, so all I did was subtract the price and the mean in that order, right? So this is price, 
minus the mean of 368. Don't worry that it's negative because now you're going to square it. So now what we're going to do is take negative 0.39 and square it. Okay? And then I'll do this for each of these. Square it. So see how it doesn't even matter whether it's positive or negative. What you really need is that base value, so then you know you're just going to square it later. Okay, so when I square it, I can do 0.39 squared, and I get 0 0.1521. 0 0.09 and square it. And again, I'm, I'm kind of disregarding that negative right here because really it's going to be positive anyways. So I'm just going to put 0 0.09 squared because it's the same anyways. So if I put parentheses negative 0 0.09 parentheses and square, notice I get the same value anyways because it's just going to be positive because you're squaring it. Okay, so the next one, 0 0.0049. And you can just keep doing this, 0 0.0121, and then the last one is 0 0.0961. So, and you could just do that all in the calculator one by one. The next part is you want to go ahead and add these all up. So if we just go back to the steps here, we are, um, we took the subtraction, right? We squared it, and now we're just going to sum them up. So this is like step... 1, this is step 2, and then here's step 3. So let's go ahead and add these up, and we can just put them all in the calculator and add them up. We don't have to do it in our head. So um, I can go ahead and grab this number here, plus the 0.81, plus 0 0.0049 plus 0 0.0121 plus 0 0.0961. And so that gives us a total of 0 0.2733. Okay, so we're finished at step three. And then step four, we're going to divide by n minus one because we know that we're giving a sample. Like if we actually really tried to get the entire population of prices of peanut butter all over the world in every single country and city and village, like we know that that's going to be impossible. So we know that we don't have a population but only a sample. So when you're given a sample, you're going to use n minus 1 and you should be using n minus 1 for your homework and for the rest of the class. So we're, we're always assumed we're given a sample. And it says it, I put it right here too, like we always assume a sample. Okay, so if we divide by n minus 1, so let me write that step 4 piece. So step 4 would mean that we would take the 0 0.2733 and divide by n minus 1. So notice here if I counted, I would have n equal to 5 because I have 5 data. So I would divide by n minus 1 here. Okay, so that's just going to be 0 0.2733 divided by 4. And I can just put that in the calculator. And get 0 0.068325. And step 5, the last piece, is to take the square root. So we're going to take the square root of 0 0.068325. Okay, so the standard deviation, we can put SD or we could put sigma, however you want to put it. So is equal to, and then let's take the square root. 
So how we're going to take the square root in the calculator is by using green with green. So here's my square button, but then here's the square root button. So I'm going to hit second square root. So see how it displays that. And then I'm going to move my arrow up and highlight the previous answer and hit enter and then close the parentheses and hit enter. And the reason why I did that is so I didn't have to make an entry error, right? Maybe I missed, I put eight, six instead of six, eight, you know, so if I just copy and paste from the exact calculator, then my error, I don't have an error. And so when I do that, I get 0.26139. I'll stop there. Obviously it can go on. But recall that if I go back to the properties of standard deviation, I do know that it has the same units as the original data. So that means the units of my original data is going to be dollars, right? Because they were prices of peanut butter jar. So if this is going to be dollars, I'm going to go ahead and round to the nearest cent. So the standard deviation will be equal to 26 cents. Okay, and so if I wanted to interpret um, this with given the mean here and then given the standard deviation here, I could say something similar to what I have up here in my box where it says I could say the average peanut butter cost is blah and give or take this many cents or whatever. So let me say that the average peanut butter jar costs $3.68, give or take 26 cents. And so we just go ahead and rewrite that average is blah, give or take standard deviation. So in, I write it in context of the scenario. I use the units in the scenario. So the average peanut butter jar costs $3.68, give or take 26 cents. And that, that is like language that's communicating my math and numerical stuff and stats into something where I could talk to anybody about what I'm doing with peanut butter jars. So really it's about the language and the communication part when we interpret.